This is a very interesting question, and it touches on some topics that I'm very passionate about and excited about, namely mitochondrial health. And I had to do a little bit of research on this one. And the experience of that research, I have to say, was a little bit bizarre. And I'm going to share with you what I did and what I found. And hopefully that leads us all to some more clarity. So to give a little bit of background information, ubiquinol is the bioactive form of CoQ10. CoQ10 is a molecule that is made naturally in the body. We get some from the food and it is very good for mitochondrial health. Mitochondria are what make the energy, the ATP for all the cells in your body. Healthier mitochondria, healthier you, everything in your body tends to work better when your cells have more energy to do their jobs. Now, ubiquinol is the bioactive form of CoQ10, and it's about two times more bioavailable in the body. So that's why generally people will tend to take ubiquinol as opposed to CoQ10. And when we look in the body, 95% of the CoQ10 that is found in the blood, in the plasma, is in ubiquinol form. So just by going straight to that, you are getting a better results generally in your body in terms of your actual biology. And there is this company called MitoQ, and they sell a product that they pitch as being much better than CoQ10 or than ubiquinol. And the compound in here is what's called mitokinol, and they call it MitoQ for short. And their way of explaining what this is, is that this is ubiquinol, which they have somehow made smaller, they say. It's not quite clear to me how exactly that's done, uh, but that's what they say. Uh, they made it smaller, and they've attached a positively charged ion to it. And that this allows more of it to get into the cell and also to cross into the mitochondria. And this is happening because, one, it's smaller, so it fits through more easily, and mitochondria naturally have a negative electrical charge. This, with the positively charged ion, is positive, of course, and opposites attract, and it pulls it uh, into the mitochondria more effectively. So there are a lot of studies about this MitoQ that certainly show benefits, um, but the question that it comes down to, I think, is which is gonna give you more bang for your buck, taking ubiquinol or taking MitoQ? Because even though they're both good, they both certainly have supportive studies, uh, you want to spend your money on what's going to deliver the most health benefit for you. So I wanted to try to figure out what is actually giving you more benefit in terms of effect per dollar that you're going to be spending. So I want to kind of walk you through what I did here. So let's open this up. So I started off on the homepage of their website here where they are making their big claim to fame, which is that this MitoQ is up to a thousand times more effective at entering mitochondria than regular CoQ10. Now, that up to a thousand times more effective felt a little bit weird to me. Um, one, because of the, the lawyer legalese type wording of, of up to, meaning it could be two times and that would still fit the definition of up to a thousand. Uh, and also the fact that nature doesn't often tend to work in such round multiple of 10 numbers. So when I see a very big, very round number, like 1,000 times, that makes me just kind of wonder a little bit. So, you know, maybe that's some marketing, maybe that's some lawyer speak there, but I figured if they're going to say something like this, I'm sure they've got some good scientific support behind it. So I went then over to their page uh, about the research because I figured, okay, this is where I'm going to find the backup for this, I'm going to understand more deeply what's going on here. You see they've got 500 plus papers. Um, they have over 60 patents and $60 million spent on research. I figured, okay, you're spending $60 million on research. I'm sure there's going to be at least one study that makes it really obvious exactly how good this is and how it compares in the body to something like ubiquinol. So they say, don't just take our word for it. So I didn't. I kept scrolling down and started opening up some of these tabs. And... I see, okay, we got lots of studies here. Um, they're generally not linked, which was un kind of annoying to me, but I can I can live with that. I know how to copy and paste and do some Googling. Um, the vast majority of these, unfortunately, I would, I would Google them. And when studies are found online, sometimes you find the full text of the study and you can read the entire thing. Others, you can only read the abstract, which is like a very basic teaser kind of summary of the study, and you have to pay money to read the rest of it. Um, so... 
I was not really seeing here. You know, lots of different studies on benefits. Great. Uh, you can find just as many, if not more, studies on benefits coming from ubiquinol. So that's not telling me how this compares. So I thought, okay, I'm not finding it here. I'm sure I can just email them and they will be able to really easily point me in the right direction. So I went to their, their customer service and I sent in a message and I said to them, can you please show me the study where this number of a thousand times more effective than CoQ10 comes from? Um, just so I can understand a little bit more and, and have a bit deeper knowledge of the product before I spend this kind of money on it, because it's obviously a very expensive supplement. I need to understand um, why it's so expensive and how good it's gonna be for me. And I was asking, do you have a specific study you can link me to directly comparing the efficacy or, or, or the absorption or, or, or anything directly comparing CoQ10 or ubiquinol, I would take either one, um, with MitoQ. And so they said, uh, unfortunately, MitoQ has not been tested against other CoQ10 brands, and therefore we are unable to say for certain the comparison. Okay, but they seem pretty certain about saying a thousand times on the homepage of their website. So they say, however, MitoQ is in parentheses, up to a thousand times more effective at getting into the mitochondria, mitochondria compared to regular CoQ10 supplements due to the advanced and patented delivery system. The electrical gradient across the cell membrane makes it accumulate inside the cytoplasm around five times higher than outside the cell. Then the much larger electrical gradient across the mitochondrial membrane makes it concentrate inside mitochondria up to 200 times higher again. Now, now I'm starting to get a little bit of a taste of where that number 1,000 is coming from. I think it's coming from this number 5 multiplied times this number 200. However, those numbers don't seem to be, from the way the sentence is written, don't seem to be in comparison to CoQ10. It seems to me, now maybe I'm misunderstanding, it seems to me that they're saying that the levels of MitoQ that you find inside the cell are five times higher than what you find outside the cell. And then what you find um, inside the mitochondria itself is 200 times higher than what you find inside the cell. Multiply those and you get a thousand. Okay, well then what that is saying is that this gives you 1000 times the levels within the mitochondria that you have just generally floating around in the body. It doesn't seem to be a comparison to CoQ10. So that was weird. Um, now, they linked me then to this other page on their website to look at a comparison of CoQ10 versus MitoQ. Now, this had just kind of some general information about it here, uh, and I couldn't find actually a comparison, again, that, that would say, here's what's happening with one, here's what's happening with another, here's the actual numbers for how they compare, and that's where we have 1,000x. Um, I just, I wasn't getting the information I was looking for, uh, but you know, I thought, look, this was just one email I wrote them, it's just a customer service person who's trying their hardest, let me try to write back and maybe clarify more because they also linked me to all their studies, that same page I had started out on, but I wasn't finding what I was looking for there. So I wrote back and I said, thank you for your reply. You, you guys definitely uh, have a lot of studies linked and referenced on your site. Can you please recommend to me which of these studies I should start with to read about this up to a thousand times effectiveness at getting into the mitochondria? I'm very excited to learn more. And so I sent that email and then I got a reply. They suggested reading below this study, uh, which is a general overview of MitoQ, which mentions CoQ10. Yes, this study was talking about MitoQ and it said it's a bit better than CoQ10, but there was no comparison. Again, no numbers here. And then they said from here, you can branch out into specific areas like heart, liver, joint, and whatever studies specifically you're interested in. This was getting to be one of those situations where, you know, have you ever had it when you ask somebody a question that should have a pretty specific answer? You're kind of almost spoon feeding it to them. You're putting it right out there for them. And it should be easy to get an answer. And their answer is instead to an answer to a totally different question from the one you asked or an answer that just is kind of feels like they're obfuscating a little bit. It was odd to me. And I'm still assuming the best, you know, this is just a customer service person, you know, they maybe don't have all the information. Um, so I, you know, gave them the benefit of the doubt. 
and I wrote back again and I said thank you for sending this. I read through the study abstract you sent me, but I couldn't find any reference to the 1000x effect of MitoQ compared to the CoQ10 that your website is talking about. This is again, this is the big claim to fame that they make in the main image on their homepage. And they spent $60 million in research? I would think this would be an easy thing to like, okay, here's a study. We spent a couple million dollars on this one because it seems to be the most important. And I said, is there anything I can specifically read that explains where this 1000 times number comes from? And I didn't hear back on this email for quite a few days. And I was thinking maybe they just don't want to deal with me in these questions because probably the vast majority of their customers um, don't dig in in this fashion um, and, and can't be bothered. Uh, and they would be fine just letting me go. Um, but then five days later, I got a reply. And I guess during these five days, I'm guessing perhaps the customer service representative had to consult with somebody higher up in the company to get some clarification here because they were realizing they didn't have access to the answer that I was looking for. And so she said, thank you for your patience. Um, and she sends me a new link now. And she says, this is the paper written by Mike Murphy and Rob Smith in 2007 that showed that due to the electrochemical, electrochemical properties of MitoQ, the electrical gradient across the cell membrane causes it to accumulate inside the cytoplasm around five times higher than outside of the cell. Again, this touches back to what we talked about in the beginning. So you're going to have five times more in the cell than outside the cell. Great. That's awesome. But how does that compare to co regular CoQ10 or ubiquinol? We haven't really been given a point of comparison. It says, additionally, the much larger electrical gradient across the mitochondrial membrane causes it to concentrate in inside the mitochondria up to 200 times higher again. So we're basically repeating what we had in that original email. And they explain here that that's where the thousand times number comes from. This means that MitoQ can accumulate inside the mitochondria up to a thousand times more effectively than regular CoQ10. Now, I don't know where that comparison to CoQ10 comes from. It's not clear because what they're talking about is something different. Uh, are you get, unless they're saying that CoQ10 is found at the same levels inside the mitochondria as inside, uh, just generally in the body outside of the cell, but they haven't really established that or shown that to me. But anyways, they linked me to the study or the paper, um, well, not really a study, and it was just an abstract that gave like no information, nothing useful in the abstract. Fortunately, I was able to do some deeper research and I was able to find a site online that would give me uh, the full and complete text of this paper. It's very hard to find because most sites just had the abstract, would have had to pay some money uh, to get access to the full thing, but I found a site uh, that would give me access to the full paper without having to pay. And I read through it and it's dense. There's a lot of information in here and it does talk about how you can take an ion like this, specifically a lipophilic cation, and attach it to something, not necessarily to MitoQ, but just to something in general, and that that will help it get into the cell and help it get into the mitochondria. Now, the only numbers I was able to find in this paper around this are from this graphic that I'll put up on the screen here, and this shows three to 10 times getting into the cell, and then 100 to 500 times getting into the actual mitochondria. Okay, so I'm not sure where the, the 1000 number comes from here, because it seems you have somewhere between 300 on the low side and 5000 on the high side. I don't know how we just randomly pick 1000 out of that. And so this is just, it seems very general. It's not on this supplement specifically, or even on this compound specifically that this is done. And it certainly is not a direct comparison against, okay, here much, here's how much CoQ10 or how much ubiquinol we absorbed, and now here is how much MitoQ actually was able to get in. There were also a couple of other links included in the last email. A study in 2010 that looks at the bioavailability of MitoQ in vivo, uh, but not necessarily comparing to CoQ10 or to ubiquinol. And then one that looks at when healthy middle-aged men either took 20 milligrams a day of MitoQ which is, is twice the label dose on the supplement. So uh, that's kind of admitting right there that you gotta take more than what's recommended uh, to maybe get benefits. Or 200 milligrams of CoQ10 
And here, both of these were able to suppress uh, mitochondrial reactive oxygen species levels. So they're both producing that benefit. But MitoQ was able to do one thing that CoQ10 was not, and this was to elevate muscle catalase expression, which is an antioxidant enzyme. However, they're not comparing these on a fair level here. They are giving you 20 milligrams of MitoQ. And so that's already double what they recommend on the label. And then they're only giving 200 milligrams of CoQ10. That's a 10x comparison. It's not a 100x comparison, and it's definitely not a 1,000 X comparison. And so if we assume that it's okay, these are maybe just a, a comparable on a 10x level rather than a thousand x level, then CoQ10 for your money is going to give you more bang for your buck because you can consume a whole lot more. Even more so with ubiquinol, because if ubiquinol is twice as effective as CoQ10, you would be able to do this comparative study with only 100 milligrams of ubiquinol. And it's not uncommon for somebody to take 300 milligrams of ubiquinol. And given the drastic cost disparity between these two, to me, it's just a stronger argument for ubiquinol supplementation over the mitoquinol. So that's where I came to on this. You know, I get excited about new and cutting edge supplements, but I also like to see the research and support for the claims made behind them. And I really tried my hardest here. And if I miss something, please show it to me. I am open-minded about this. I am very open to be convinced of the complete opposite of everything that I have said here. But as much as I have tried to find the support here, I've made, I think, a real genuine effort. It just hasn't shown up and hasn't been given to me, even when I've asked for it very directly on multiple occasions. So if you guys have tried CoQ10, if you've tried Ubiquinol, if you tried MitoQ, leave a comment below. I'm curious to know what your experience has been like. And if you wouldn't mind, while you're down there, leave us a like, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the videos that we put out there, on any of this fun educational content, delicious recipes, and all kinds of other good stuff. We love having you along on this adventure of health and happiness and wellness with us. Have an amazing day, and look forward to seeing you all again next time.